headers, footers, and page numbers from simple to elaborate in Microsoft Word 2010. To begin with in this session, we're going to talk about what headers and footers are. We're going to start really basic and then sort of build up. And to begin with, headers are a tool that will be visible at the top of every page. You can currently see at the top of the page that I'm in, it says Espresso Yourself Employee Handbook and also has a graphic on the right side of the page and the year. So that's a header and that will be repeated at the top of every page. A footer is at the bottom of the page and here we have a little graphic and our page number. And we can see when we go to the second page that our header is repeated again and again. So when we talk about headers and footers, that's what we're talking about. Some sort of graphic, some sort of information, some identifier that we want to have repeated throughout our document. So we have headers in here and footers as well. And these are ones that are based off of themes. So the headers that we have here with this theme, um, you know, I don't know if I would choose it, but there we go, right? It may be a little much. Um, you would also have to have a printer that could do borderless printing to make sure that the graphic printed well. So eh, I don't know. But in any case, we have a header and footer in this document. Now to add, manipulate, delete headers and footers, we go to the Insert tab. On the Insert tab, we have header and footer buttons. So let's go ahead now, and um, I want to start from scratch here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my footer and get rid of my header. So now they're not there. And if you ever have a header or footer you want to get rid of, it's that simple. Just go to header or footer and choose remove header or footer. Now the first footer I'm going to put in here is really basic. Probably the most common function used when creating footers is adding a page number. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and go to my page number drop down, click that, and now notice I can choose top of page, bottom of page, page margins, current position, format, and remove page numbers. Well, I'm going to go ahead and choose bottom of page, and I want it to go in the center, so I'm just going to click that option. And I'm on page two, so it says two, right? If I scroll up, there's a one. And I want to put the word page in front of it, so I'm just going to type page and a space. And again, just to show that it updates for every footer, when I scroll down to the next page, it already says page. So that's simply adding a page number. Now, one of the nice things about adding a page number is that we can come in here and choose format page numbers, and there are other options. We can choose different number formats in here, right? We can also choose a specific number to start at, if we want to start at two or three or four. And we'll cover this stuff in just a minute. So I'm going to click OK and just have it be the way it was. But I just wanted to show you that we do have options when formatting page numbers. Pretty nice. So that is a basic page number foot. That is a basic page number footer. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is delete this and we're going to start over once again. So I'm going to close out of the header footer, go back to my insert tab, footer and remove footer. And indeed it's gone. Even though we created it just by going to add page number, by removing the footer, we got rid of it. We could have also come up to page number and chosen remove page numbers there too. Either way, works. Now let's go ahead and add in a stock or themed header and footer. So I'm going to start with the header. So I'm going to scroll to the top. I'm going to hit control home to get all the way to the top of my document. And I'm going to click my header button. And there are many different styles of header. Now there are blank ones up at the top, blank and blank three columns. The blank will give you left justified text. The blank three columns will give you left justified text, centered text, and right aligned text, if you'd like that. And then we have a bunch of other options in here. And these are designed to ease the process of creating an attractive header. So if I choose pinstripes, for instance, it pops in with my document title. Now, if I want to have a footer that matches, I'm going to go ahead and add it from 
the footer dropdown. Now, one thing I want to point out is that we are now working in the header and footer tools design contextual tab. What that means is whenever you're in a header or footer, you will get a design tab that you can make changes in. If you click away from the header or footer, watch, I'll double click. I just double clicked in my document. I'm now in my document. The header and footer get grayed out and I no longer have that design tab, but all I have to do is double click in my header area and it pops back. So I have this pinstripe header. I'm going to go ahead and add a footer. And if I want, I can come down to the P's and add the pinstripe footer to match. Now, I don't have to use the same footer. If I want, and I've done this before, I may decide that I want to go with alphabet. That actually may complement the header quite well. I can sort of scroll up and see. Yeah, that might work. So you don't have to choose the one that you choose for header or footer, vice versa. You can choose whichever one you want for either. So down here in the text, I may want to just put a date in here or whatever. I could type whatever text in I want. And that is a simple header and footer using themes. Now the themes can be a lot. So I know a lot of people use themes, but even more possibly don't use themes. They just add the basic headers and footers. And we'll probably do sort of a mixture of both. And so that we're not kind of going in and out of documents throughout this session, I'm just going to come back up here and I'm going to go ahead and remove the header and remove the footer from this document. You notice they're completely blank now. Double click on my document. There's nothing there. And what I'd like to do now is get into a little bit more involved headers and footers. One of the great things about headers and footers is that you can use different numbering schemes for different sections of a document. So you may have a table of contents or some sort of introduction that's numbered with Roman numerals. The main part of your document may have uh, standard numbers. And then you could have an appendix or some sort of index at the back that has A, B, and C for a numbering scheme. And we can accomplish that by using sections along with our headers and footers. And to begin with, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in a table of contents. And we have other sessions that talk about this, so I'm just going to kind of go and do it. Go to References, Table of Contents, and there. And it doesn't look like it did anything until I scroll up, and then we can see there's an entire table of contents. Good. Now, this table of contents ends, and just immediately after that, the main part of my document begins. Well, I don't want that. So I need to do something about that. So what I'm going to do is click down here in my document. Now I'm going to add in a section break. I want to distinguish between my table of contents and my main document. So the way I'm going to do this is I am going to go ahead and I'm going to add a section break. So you go to your page layout tab, go to breaks, and I'm going to choose section break next page which will give me a page break and a section break combined. And indeed, it drops the introduction to the page below. If I scroll up, I can see that I have a section break next page at the bottom of my table of contents. I have almost a full blank page here, but so be it. So now let's go back and add in our table of contents. So now let's go back and add in our page numbering. And when we do this, we will incorporate different numbering styles for the different sections. So I'm going to go up to my insert tab and I'm going to start off with just basic page numbering. So I'm going to choose page number, bottom of page, and in the center. And so I have page one. Now I was in my main document when I did that. So notice when I scroll up, the bottom of my table of contents has pages one, two, and three. And then when I scroll down, my main document begins over at 1. Well, that's actually kind of doing what I want. It kind of got it right by choosing insert page number. But it kind of got it wrong, too, because I want to use a different numbering scheme. So if I was to come up here into my header, go to page number, format page number, and let's say I want this to be Roman numerals, lowercase Roman numerals. I'm just going to do that the one, two, three, and click OK. Well, certainly my table of contents is now one, two, and three.
it has done it correctly. And if I scroll down to the pages after that, they are all numbered properly. This is because we chose to do it the way we did by adding the page numbers. If we were to add the page numbers after the fact, it may not have worked so well. So now we have our first section is Roman numerals, and after that we have one, two, three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm going to hit Control End to get to the end of my document. And when I'm at the end of my document here, I'm going to put in another section break. And here I want to have a different numbering scheme. So if I look at the bottom, it does start over for me, and this is great. What Word 2010 is doing is it's actually saying, okay, this is a new section. I bet you want to restart your numbering. So it actually does a lot of this for me. So now what I want to do is come to page number, format page number, and this time I'm going to choose the ABC. I'm going to use uppercase ABC, click OK, and now I have ABC. So it's really that simple. I think the, the most important thing to remember is just to use your page number drop down, and that will help you out. Now let's go ahead and add in a section up at the top of our page. Excuse me, at the top of our document. So I'm all the way at the top of my document. I'm going to double click and go Control Home. So I got out of my header and footer and then went to the top of my document. And what I want to do now is I'm going to insert a cover page. So I'm going to go up to Insert and choose, I can choose Cover Page or Blank Page. The cover page styles actually really can buy, kind of be a lot. Some of them are kind of nice and some of them can just be a lot. So I'm going to just put a blank page because I want to format it my way. So I'm just going to put a blank page up at the top. And notice that it has a little I on it, right? A little small Roman numeral I for page one. And if I scroll down here to the next section, I just wanted to go slow. I'll just jump down here. I can see there's a two. The other way I could do this, by the way, if there's a previous and a next, if I choose previous or next, it will move me up and down through the different sections, right? So that kind of works as well. I can also go to the header if I want, or go to the footer, switch back and forth here with my header and footer tools, another nice little combination that we have there. So I'm going to go back all the way up to the top of my document and look at my footer. And I have this I here. And on a title page, you really don't want a page number. So I'm going to go ahead and backspace that to delete it. And with it deleted now, now we have no page number, right? It is deleted. And if I look down here, oh, look at that. It actually got rid of my page number and my table of contents. And in my main document, it got rid of the page numbering there as well. The reason is that even though Word 2010 now really helps you with your numbering schemes, all of those different footers are still linked. You'll notice on the right-hand side of my footer, it says same as previous. So I'm going to undo that. And you can see the number came back in. And what that same as previous means is that the overall layout of the footer is going to be the same even though we have different numbering. All that's different about it is the numbering. If I was to type page in front of this, right, we did that earlier. If I was to type page in front of this, and now I went up to previous, you can see that in my table of contents, well, I have the page there. And if I go all the way up to my cover page, way up at the top, you can see that it says page I there. Well, I don't want the page I there, right? And I also don't want this to be page two. This really should be page one. So when we added that page up at the top, right, we have a page break, but it didn't give us a section break. Hmm. So that's kind of a, a rub too. So let's go ahead and click on our first page and just choose different first page from our header and footer tools. By choosing different first page, it got rid of all headers and footers on that page. And if we want to add some new header or footer, we can, but we're not tied down or bound to that. Now when I scroll down to the bottom, notice that what I want to be page one, right, is actually page two. Okay, now let's go ahead and massage this so that we can get this page two working correctly. 
Now, I understand that this is sort of a little bit of an odd process. And this is what happens with headers and footers. If you don't have a document sort of fully laid out and then add in your headers and footers at the very end. If you just do your headers and footers at the very end, it'll work pretty nicely for you. If you just put your section breaks in there and choose your different numbering schemes between there, you can see that when we first started this Word 2010 really did a nice job figuring that out for us. However, because we're adding sections and pages in after the fact, we're getting a little bit different result. So what I'm going to do here is show you that if I come up to the, my page numbering and choose format page numbers, and I want it to start at page I, and notice that that's the default when I go to page number format dialog box, it guesses that I want to start at page I, and I'm going to click OK, and my top page turned to page I, well that's not really what I want, right? We still want nothing on that first page, but the problem is that on my second page, it you know, it has a page two. And we really don't want that page number up here at the top. And part of this is because we have a page break as opposed to a section break. So I'm going to actually put in a page break on this top page. I'm sorry, a section break on this top page. And I'm going to get rid of this page break here. So now our top page is still page I. And then notice down here at the bottom, we are still page I. So we solves one problem. We have page I and page I. So now what we need to do is go up to our first section again, double click on our header, and confirm that different first page is checked. It got unchecked in there. So now when it's checked again, we have no footer on our first page. And we go to our table of contents, it's page I. And the next is page II. And let's confirm as we go down that our main document has not changed. That should be page one. And if I come out of this, jump out of this, and just hit control end to get all the way to the bottom of my document, I have page A. So that's really how we can handle page headers and page footers inside of Word. The main thing to keep in mind is to watch out for doing this as you go. Try to add your headers and footers as late in the process as possible so that you can really reap the benefit. Otherwise, if you do it on the fly like we did here, you can see that you will have to sort of go back in and massage it and change it. And hopefully we talked about some of those things that will help you out. The big things to remember, if you're having trouble with sections, always remember that you can delete the link to previous. And that will sort of give you a fully independent footer from the previous sections. If you want a different first page of your document, always know that you can change that. And if you're in a sections, if you're using section breaks, this will give you a different first page of that section. And finally, your page number, format page numbers, is a hugely helpful tool to get you going there as well. And we saw when we first started this that Word really helped us out. So those would be a couple of things to keep in mind. One final thing to keep in mind, I'm going to click back in my document and come down to my table of contents. When we first did this, we had just a table of contents. We didn't have a blank page before it. We didn't have this page after it. What I want to do now is just confirm. I'm going to go to update table here in my table of contents, and I'm going to have it update the entire table. And we're going to take a look and see what happens to our page numbers, see if any of those get messed up. I'm going to click OK, and sure enough, they don't. That's that other litmus test to make sure what we're doing is working. Our page numbering in this case stays the same. However, if we had added or subtracted sections, then it would look different. It would actually update if we'd actually removed sections. And by sections, I mean portions of the document, not actual sections of the document in the terms of word sections. But there we are. So that's a little bit on headers and footers in Word 2010.